Hey guys, Neely here. Today I am coming in for an Instant Pot video. And in this video, I wanted to do kind of a pot in pot cooking 101. I know there are a lot of Instant Pot newbies out there after Amazon Prime Day. So I just wanted to do an overview of what pot in pot cooking is and give you some ideas of things you can cook in your Instant Pot using the pot in pot method. So first off, you might be wondering what pot in pot cooking is. <laughs> if you've never heard of it before, it's kind of a funny name. But basically, Basically, pot and pot cooking is instead of cooking the food directly in the stainless steel inner pot that comes in the instant pot, you cook the food in another container within that stainless steel inner pot. So the other container or bowl that you can use can either be glass, something like a Pyrex, or ceramic, something like this. Um, or my new current favorite, stainless steel. These are some food storage containers that I was sent to try out. There's three sizes in here and they come with uh, the lids that attach on. So you can use them with or without the lids in the Instant Pot, which is fantastic. There's another smaller size. All three of these sizes fit inside the Instant Pot. There's the last little tiny one that's so cute. So then why would you wanna use a pot and pot cooking rather than um, just cooking in the Instant Pot itself? And there are a few reasons. The first is uh, basically you need at least a cup of liquid in the Instant Pot for it to steam and to build up enough pressure to pressurize the pot. If you don't have enough liquid in there, it just won't work, this bottom will scorch and the Instant Pot has an auto off uh, mechanism, so you're, it just doesn't work. So for certain dishes like casseroles, meatloafs, quiches, things like that, you don't wanna add a bunch of water to those to have enough liquid to get the pot to pressure, it just would ruin the dish. So using the pot and pot method, what you do is you put water in the bottom of the Instant Pot, then you put in your trivet that came with your Instant Pot, and you set your dish or bowl on top of that so it keeps the water underneath and keeps the bowl out of the water, and the water underneath will um, give off enough steam to build up the pressure without having to add the liquid directly into the bowl that you are cooking in. So also there are a few different types of food like oatmeal and tomato sauce, things like that, that are very thick and they have a hard time building up enough pressure. So like I said before, the bottoms can scorch. Um, you doing oatmeal, I had that happen a few times when I was trying to cook oatmeal just in the pot. Sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't and I just found that cooking it using the pot and pot method was a lot more reliable in getting me a good outcome and I didn't have to make a super watery oatmeal by adding lots of water to it. I can put the water in the bottom of the pot and it will build up enough pressure and I'm good to go. A few other reasons that you might be interested in using the pot and pot cooking method is for reheating food. A lot of people are trying to get away from using microwaves these days and the Instant Pot works great for reheating food with the pot and pot method. Oftentimes if you store your food in glass or in stainless steel in the fridge, you can just pop it right into the Instant Pot um, in the same bowl that you were storing it in, heat it up on the steam uh, pot and pot method for a couple of minutes and you got your food reheated and it's a really great reheating method because it doesn't dry the food out because it's cooking with the steam. So it really keeps things tasting fresh even though they are leftovers. Also the pot and pot method is great for cooking multiple things at a time. You can cook like a meat dish at the bottom and then if you have a trivet with a little bit longer legs, you can put a pot of rice over the top of that and as long as the cook time for both things is similar, you can cook them both at the same time and you can have your whole meal done um, just in one Instant Pot. Also a great thing with these stainless steel containers with the lids is that you can actually stack a couple of them on top of each other inside the Instant Pot so you can cook two things at a time. Um, like I said, as long as the cook time is similar, uh, you can just get it all done in one pot. Another way that I like to use the pot and pot method is reheating individual freezer meals. Oftentimes I will make like a giant pot of soup and we'll eat it for a little while and the last few servings when we're kind of bored of it, I will throw into containers and put them in the freezer. And so I'll be able to pull one of these out, pop it out of the plastic container. I'll put it into my pot and pot pot and um, you do want to use for this method for anything frozen you want to use something stainless steel or aluminum you don't want to use glass because the frozen 
food plus the hot, uh, the heat of the Instant Pot it doesn't mix very well and you could break your dish. So definitely pick up something stainless steel for that. I just pop this out of the um, plastic container, put it in my pot in pot and then throw it in the Instant Pot on steam and I can have a nice bowl of soup ready in just a few minutes. Now, if you've been around the Instant Pot Facebook community for any length of time, you've probably noticed that a lot of people love baking and baking especially cheesecakes in their Instant Pots. This is super popular and there's so many amazing recipes for Instant Pot cheesecakes. And the Pot and Pot method is amazing for baking cheesecakes because um, if you've baked cheesecakes in the oven before, I'm sure you've heard of putting in a water bath like putting in a dish of water so it can steam and it keeps the cheesecake from cracking. And with the pot and pot cooking in the Instant Pot, you have the water bath built right in. So it is perfect for any kind of baking, um, especially cheesecakes, anything you wanna keep really moist while it's baking that you don't want dried out. You can do cakes, flan, brownies. Although a side note, if you Google search Instant Pot Brownies, you might be surprised with the results. It might not be quite what you're looking for. So when you're looking for pans or bowls to use uh, with the pot and pot method, basically you can use anything that is oven safe. You can use stainless steel, glass, ceramic, aluminum, even silicone will work, and then anything else that is marked as oven safe. One little note though, um, the stainless steel seems to conduct heat the best, so I prefer cooking in stainless steel. The glass and the ceramic, when I have done dishes in those, they seem to take a lot longer, so you just kind of have to play with the cook time and see what works for your recipe. So like I mentioned before, my current favorite pot and pot containers are these stainless steel food storage containers, um, and I just wanted to make a couple of notes. If you do use these for instant pot cooking, they have a ring in here of silicone to keep the lids airtight and that's very similar to in the inside of the instant pot there's a silicone ring and that expands when it's heated and that's what allows the instant pot to build up the pressure and be airtight and if you use the lids um, of these containers in your instant pot you will get a very similar effect where these um, silicone rings will expand and you get it actually pressurized um, on the container. So when you pull it out of the Instant Pot, you'll have to put something in there to break the suction. If you just try to pull it off with your hand, it's stuck, but all you have to do is get like a butter knife and just break the suction real easily and it pops right out. The other thing is, like I said, the silicone expands when um, it's heated and then it'll shrink back down when it cools off. So when it first comes out of the Instant Pot and it's hot, this ring will be difficult to pop back in to the, um, the edging right here. Same effect I saw when I washed them in the dishwasher. After the heat of the dishwasher, the ring was just a little bit loose and it was hard to pop back in, but as soon as I let it cool off, um, it just popped back in really easily. So there you go. Those are the basics of pot and pot cooking in the Instant Pot. There are so many ways that you can use this cooking technique. Um, if you follow the Instant Pot Facebook group, um, it's a gigantic group, and and there are, I mean, you can just search pot and pot and you'll get endless ideas of recipes and ways to use this method. I have a couple videos on pot and pot cooking, um, doing rolled oats and steel cut oats, which I will link in the cards. I will also link down below to a bunch of tried and true pot and pot recipes that lots of people are loving. So you can check that out for some ideas. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and do a batch of pot and pot white rice, just to give you a little demo of what it's like. Uh, I could talk about it all day, but until you see it done, it really doesn't solidify it into your brain. I know it's a little bit of a weird technique and can be intimidating when you've never done it before. So seeing it done is often very helpful. So I am going to point my camera downward and show you some pot and pot rice. Here's everything I need to cook my rice. The first thing I'm going to do is add one cup of water to the bottom of the Instant Pot. You always want to make sure you have your stainless steel inner pot in. You never cook without that, even using the pot and pot method. I'm gonna put one cup of water down in the bottom. Then I'm going to add in my trivet that came with the Instant Pot. And then I'm gonna assemble my rice, water, and salt. I'm using the medium stainless steel food storage container. And I'm just gonna put one cup of rinsed rice in the bottom of my pot. And then a pinch of salt. 
and one cup of water. So it's a one to one ratio, water to rice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the lid. You do not have to cook the rice with the lid, but I'm actually gonna stack some things and cook multiple things at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my lid and set this right down on my trivet. And now just for fun, I'm going to add some frozen peas that I'm gonna steam at the same time as cooking my rice. And I'm not gonna be using the lid on the peas because I want the steam to get in there. And just for fun, I'm also gonna add a couple of eggs to make steamed or boiled eggs at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock my lid, make sure that it is on sealing, and I am gonna cook this on steam for six minutes. And when I use the pot and pot method, I always use the steam function. The Instant Pot finished its cooking time and I let the pressure release naturally for five minutes and I don't wanna let it go any longer than that. Just because I have the eggs in there, um, if, it, if the eggs weren't in there, I could let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes and it'd be totally fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and release the rest of the pressure. All right, let's see what we have. The first thing I'm gonna do is get these eggs and drop them into this ice water to stop them cooking. I do have a video on how to do boiled eggs in the Instant Pot that I will link up above if you wanna just do eggs. Now I'm gonna pull out my peas. They are definitely done, but not overdone. I didn't even add any water or anything to this. I knew the steam would be plenty and they are perfectly done. Now I'm gonna pull my rice pot out of here, open the container, and you can see the lid is suctioned on here, and I can just lift it up like that and it won't come off, but I'm just going to stick my knife right up here and release the suction real fast. <laughs> there it goes, and like I said, this little ring kind of pops out, but as soon as it cools off, it'll be easy to pop right back in. And here is my beautifully cooked rice. So it's a little bit weird of a meal, but if I wanted to have rice, boiled eggs, and green peas, I have it all ready to go. And it took six minutes of cooking time besides the time it takes to come up to pressure, which is very quick with only the one cup of water at the bottom, and then the five minutes of letting it pressure release. So that is it for my Instant Pot, Pot and Pot 101 cooking video. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions about Pot and Pot cooking, let me know down below if there's something I wasn't clear about. Also, please link down below any of your favorite Pot and Pot recipes. I would love to hear about them, and I know everyone that reads the comments from here on out would love to get new ideas. There are so many options. So please let us know down below what you love cooking um, using Pot and Pot cooking in your Instant Pot. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys are all doing great, and I will be back again very soon. Bye, guys.